Welcome to the inaugural video of the RPSC Collector's Journey um, interview series. Um, today, we're uh, very, very pleased to have David McLaughlin with us. Um, and we hope that you'll enjoy this series as we have a chance to find out um, what led some of Canada's leading philatelists to, into, the, um, into the area of stamp collecting and uh, what's happened throughout their lives and how things have changed. And uh, we hope you might enjoy it. Um, David grew up on a farm in the Ottawa Valley. He's a graduate of the School of Mines in the Halebury and earned an MBA from the Ivy Business School. He and Gloria moved to Toronto in 1972 for what he expected to be a temporary job and has remained ever since. David retired in December of 2016 after a 45-year career in industrial process controls, business ownership, and project and engineering management. David collected stamps in his youth, and during the 1970s, he was a member of the Bramley Stamp, Stamp Club, but after taking a job that required more travel, he drifted away from collecting, picking it up again in 1998. After starting to specialize in the leaf and numeral issue of Canada, he pared that down to just the leaf issue and began exhibiting the leafs in 2010. Since then, his exhibit has received two reserve grand and five grand awards in Canada. He won a large goal at the RPSL Stockholmia 2019 exhibit, where it was the only Canadian entry. At FIAF Continental Exhibitions, the exhibit has won three large goals and been a grand prize candidate once. At FIP uh, Patronage Exhibits in 2022, the exhibit has won two large goals with 96 and 97 points. He recently remounted his exhibit and won a large goal with 96 points and a special prize at Ibra 2023 in Essen, Germany in May. David is the president of Benaps and of CAPE, um, a past director of the RPSC and a current director of FIOC, uh, the Postal uh, Specialist Society of Canada and uh, Philatelic Specialist Society of Canada and the Green Foundation. So, David, thank you for being here with us today. You're welcome. Um, tell, tell us about your family when you were growing up. Oh, I, I grew up in uh, on a farm in the Ottawa Valley, as, as you mentioned there in the, in the intro. Uh, I was the youngest of four boys, and um, they were all older than me. There was uh, One was 10 years, one was eight years, one was five years older than me. And my family, like um, all the neighboring families around, uh, <laughs> we're, descendants, excuse me, we're descendants of the first settlers uh, in that area from the 1840s and uh, it actually maybe 1830s, mid 1830s. The township that I grew up in was actually surveyed, I think, in 1837. So, so it, it's a, a very typical uh, uh, upbringing for that area. Um, everybody worked on their farms. Uh, there was no time for vacations and nobody traveled, that type of thing. And I guess uh, for me, the first. Uh, in indication that one could travel anywhere was uh, finding a postcard in in my a book that my mother had from uh, from France and it happened to be a, a teacher that um, uh, had gone to France on the summer vacation and uh, had sent my mother a, a, a postcard so at uh, probably seven or eight years old that was the, the first kind of um, realization I guess that there was a, a world out there that was reachable from uh, uh, from my township and my farm uh, community, basically. So, um, did you grow up around collecting? Did your parents or anybody in your family collect? No, no, my. Like I guess I, you know, the, you know our, our family was a farm family, so it was 27, 24 uh, hours, seven day a, a job. Um, uh, there was no really active, no uh, time for those kind of activities uh, at that time. Uh, I was more interested in coin collecting. One of my brothers, older brothers, uh, uh, had started uh, collecting coins, uh, yeah, out, out of change, and that they not buying them at a store or anything. Um, and, and I had a couple of those uh, blue um, fold-out uh, coin holders at that time uh, for pennies and nickels and dimes and and that type of thing. But um, coins, uh, coins were too easy to spend, and uh, uh, so I got out of that. Um, and um, so there was, no, that was that was about the extent of uh, of collecting. My grandmother had a um, had a postcard uh, uh, album, as as many uh, 
of the older people had at that time because uh, they grew up during the postcard era of the early 1900s and that would save all these postcards. So there was a postcard album around uh, uh, as well, but uh, that was about it. So. How, how old were you when you first got the collecting bug? Uh, well, I, I don't know if it was the bug or not. Um, at probably about 11 or 12, um, a school friend's uh, grandmother gave us some rare Queen Victoria stamps. And uh, at that time, uh, they were quite rare. I'd never seen anything like that before in my life. But uh, now I know that they were probably Scott number 41, which is the the, probably the most common of the small, all the small queens. Uh, so that that's that was the first stamps that I that I had, um, and then uh, to try to expand it beyond that. Uh, I mean, at that time, uh, Will Woolworths and uh, Beamishes and other stores like that uh, uh, would always have these little packets of stamps that you could buy of different sizes uh, for a quarter or something of that nature. And uh, for some reason, in the Ottawa Valley. People, people subscribed to the Winnipeg Free Press weekly. Uh, and uh, there was always little uh, ads in the back of that uh, for, for stamps. Uh, so that, that's kind of where, where things started. Um, we didn't have any club or anything of that nature. Uh, there was you know, a, a, a mission band, I guess they called it, uh, from the uh, local church, et cetera, that uh, you know, saved stamps. and. Uh, I guess they were sold for um, for kilo wear and that type of thing. But, um, so um, you know that that type of activity was going on, but but not really any organized uh, collecting in the area. So that I was aware of, anyways. But there may have been there may have been some closet collectors that I wasn't aware of, but the, for myself, no. So. Right. When did you when did you get your or what did when you started to collect stamps? Did you put them in an album or did you make the mistake like I did of pasting them with glue and a loose leaf? Uh, I don't, I don't really recall. Uh, that's a long time ago. Um, um, I, I don't really recall what we did with them. Uh, I don't think we had albums. Uh, no, we, we must have had something though, but uh, I, don't, I don't recall what it was. Yeah. Um, so for you, is it ultimately about the hunt for the stamp or the acquisition of it? Well, I, I guess, um, uh, I guess it's both, or maybe maybe a bit more. Um, so I started to early seventies, I guess. Uh, um, uh, I started to. Uh, I was now in Toronto in mid, mid early to mid seventies, and um, I had I had prior to that I had been in Ottawa, so I, I got to, to go to some stamp dealers at that time, uh, and. Um, uh, the first stamp club, I guess, I had was when I was going to school in Haleybury. Um, there was a bookstore called the Highway Bookshop on Highway 17 uh, that um, had always had a big box of stamps uh, available that, that, you know, from different places, et cetera. I, know, I remember like getting a lot of Irish stamps there, uh, but you could buy them uh, there. And then... Um, I found out as well that there was a small club in, in New Liskert, so I joined that. So that was my first club, uh, and um, I was a member of it for a couple of years uh, uh, while I was while I was in Haleybury. Um, but uh, after coming to Toronto, uh, there was a, a small club in in Rexdale that I belonged to for a while. A uh, fellow named Bill Fox ran it. Uh, and um, he got me interested in a few things. And then I, I joined, we, we moved over to Bramley, uh, and um, in 74, I guess, and uh, I became a member of the Bramley Club. Um, and that's kind of the first exhibiting that I got uh, there as well too. But I, I'd started by mid, mid 1970s to, uh, to, to, to kind of specialize. Anyway, I realized I couldn't, couldn't uh, collect everything. Uh, and uh, someone, I'm not really sure who was, uh, recommended two things to me. Um, to either, either collect the Newfoundland issue issues, he said, which which were you know uh, stopped at, at, in 1949. So he said everything is you could make a complete collection of that. But but I'd never been to Newfoundland, didn't know much about it, so I, I didn't do that. Uh, but he also mentioned the, uh, the the leaves and numerals, right? So I started collecting the leaves and numerals, and uh, I really realized at one point that that even that was uh, was pretty 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 onerous. Um, and uh, I really focused on the Leafs because I, I thought that they were uh, 
uh, they were a nicer stamp, not everything. Um, I got a copy of Minus and Pratt's uh, uh, BNA um, proofs and essays and proofs uh, uh, book. It's it's actually um, a, a reprint of the proofs and um, uh, essays and proof society information with, Canada, with regard to Canada. And, and in there, I, I saw you know things that I'd never seen before, like um, uh, you know. Progressive plate proofs, uh, progressive die proofs, um, uh, the some of the essays, uh, uh, and a lot of the die proofs and plate proofs and that type of thing. Uh, and um, so that became that started, a, you know, well, to now it's probably close to a 50 year um, uh, search for that type of thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, for many years, I never, I never, I never saw it. You know, I probably saw it first at the uh, at KPEX 78. Um, uh, but, um, but then it was in kind of a very special exhibit, uh, of some sort of setup. So, I mean, the, the search, um, has been, um, uh, has been exciting. It's, it's, uh, led me down a lot of, uh, in a lot of areas, et cetera. Um, yeah, so I think the, the, the hunt, yeah, the hunt is, is, uh, is, is, is definitely, um, it was definitely important because I think that uh, kept me in the game, et cetera. Um, ownership, you know, oven by itself uh, is probably not that important. I mean, it's, you could put stuff in a safety deposit box, and it, there's no real thrill in owning that, owning it in the safety deposit box. The thrill for me basically has been to exhibit it uh, and uh, to continue to to find stuff, to continue to expand the, the collection, uh, and, and to exhibit to continue to improve the collection, etc. And that's been um, that's been very, very uh, rewarding for me. Uh, and um, it's the, for, for me, basically, um, what's, what's always been interesting to me is how things were made. Uh, and uh, I, I bring that to the, um, uh, to stamp collecting as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everybody has something that is a uh, kind of a particular focus or a particular thing that kind of, um, you know, drives them or, or uh, satisfies them with regard to stamp collecting. And for me, it's how things are made. Uh, and so when I started to be able to get uh, some of the proof material and some, some of the uh, things that uh, call archival material, and, and when I got a chance to go to the archives and see their um, plate proof collection uh, and uh, search over that uh, and find, um, you know, the... Uh, the different fresh entries and, and uh, the different uh, recuts and that type of thing that are in there. Uh, that was, uh, that was really, really, uh, um, uh, you know, interesting to me. And it really kept me going with regard to uh, trying to complete my collection. Uh, and the more complete my collection became, the more I was able to discover things um, uh, with regard to the, the leaf issue and how they were made. Uh, and um, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating uh, um, number of, uh, of things that were done. Uh, some of them uh, not very efficient, some of them quite efficient. Uh, um, but it, it, it's, it's really, to me, I guess, from the ownership standpoint, it's, it's the completeness and ba basically having a reference that, uh, you know, when I, I think about some, well, maybe, maybe that's what happened. You can go and check and see. Uh, uh, with actual material that you have, that uh, uh, whether that uh, hypothesis is correct or way out to lunch, uh, et cetera. Yeah. So, so I, you know, a lot of um, I'm, I, I attribute a lot of the uh, the success of my exhibits to the fact that I've got a lot of uh, uh, original uh, research in there, right? uh, and I highlight the original research, and and it's really satisfying when you're able to do original research on a collection. Uh, and find things that have never been discovered in 125 years of, of uh, people collecting that that issue. Now, I'm quite fortunate that uh, that that issue hasn't been really looked at in depth the way the small queens or the large queens or the pence issue or anything of that nature has been uh, delved into over the years. So uh, it's um, it, it it it's left a lot of stuff available for uh, uh, for people uh, of our generation, my generation, to. Uh, to, to, to find that weren't found before. So, and it may, that may be the case in other, uh, other um, um, 
uh, issues as well. I don't know. Like, um, I know the, I know the admirals are very uh, heavily researched, um, but um, uh, there may be other issues that are not uh, heavily researched as well. It could be people could find the same thing. So, yeah, I uh, I heard Cheryl Gans say one time that uh, when she's looking at a new project, one of the things that she always asks herself first of all is how much is left to write about this, and mm -hmm. uh, it's always exciting when you find a it's always exciting when you find a collecting area where it's pretty much fresh ground you know below the surface it's amazing yeah that that's the situation with the lease it was fresh ground for sure there, there are about three or four other leaf collectors that i know of that's that's it you know that's a that's to the extent of it so yeah yeah great now um i did a an interview for a different group um with a Belgian collector, and the following question is 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 seems to be a one that nobody wants to answer. Uh, as he said to me, if I answer this question, everybody on the planet is going to know what I'm looking for. So <laughs> feel free, feel free to be political and steer around it. But tell us about the one that got away. Uh, <laughs> there are lots of them. There are lots of them for sure. Um, I, I I think um, you know. I think the interesting thing, about, and I'm not going to answer your question directly either. So, <laughs> I know. Um, I, I think the interesting thing about the ones that get away basically is they have a habit of coming back, right? Uh, and um, so when you when you say to someone that uh, uh, that one got away, uh, um, you know everybody knows that you still want it, right? So um, I, I went to the Souther Sotheby sale in, in 2006 in New York for the. Uh, uh, for the Sir Gwen Bailey uh, uh, collection, and yeah, there was more stuff in that uh, in that sale than I could uh, uh, like I could afford in my budget. Uh, so you know, I had to make some choices in that type of thing. So there there were things that got away uh, at that time, but in the intervening intervening years, uh, all of those things have come back on the market. Okay, uh, and uh, you know, budget's a bit better, and uh, so I was able to to acquire them. Some of them maybe 15 years later, but still able to uh, still able to get them. Um, <laughs> I, I had uh, a recent uh, uh, situation where uh, one got away from me, and uh, it was back on the market in, in less than a year. So it's uh, so it depends basically. So, but uh, I understand your your friend's uh, reluctance to 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 talk about that. Uh, um, it's just it's just uh, you know they do get away for sure, but uh, not. Uh, not always forever right? yeah that's right that's right um you know keeping in mind that this is a hobby and we're not actually talking about you know things of world shaking import do you have any regrets in your collecting i, I think the 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 biggest regret for me uh would be uh, um well, a couple of them basically like the biggest well, one kind of current regret i think would be that uh i didn't start exhibiting early enough but I wish I had started exhibiting much earlier in, in my career, it, uh, but like like most people, uh, I thought that I didn't have enough. Uh, I didn't have enough material, and uh, it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't good enough to uh, to exhibit. Uh, but you know, like when I started to exhibit, you know, I, I realized that uh, you know, like um, it, it, I had I had quite a bit of stuff, et cetera, and, and it wasn't perfect, but it was. Uh, it, you got, I got a lot of feedback from it, and uh, I got a lot of um, uh, encouragement on it. And uh, people started to realize that that's what you were collecting. And uh, uh, and um, you know, someone will come to you and say, "Like I got this, I saw this," and you know, or uh, you know, nowadays basically you I'll get emails. So did you see this in this uh, in this auction or something of that nature? And I may not have seen that in an auction, or I may have it. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, but but people start to realize that you're collecting that, and uh, and uh, people make an effort to uh, to to uh, to bring things to your attention, etc. So that that's one thing. I, I guess um, the the other thing um, besides the leaf, I collect a few other a few other issues, and, and one of the issues that I one of the things that I do collect is uh, some of the postal history of the township that I grew up in, uh, and um, you know. There, there, there wasn't much in the way of local history back then, and, uh, and I think there's more of it now. But uh, uh, for example, the the first postmaster of Ross Township, um, his granddaughter was my teacher. 
which I which I didn't wow. know uh, until many many years later, you know. Uh, and uh, you know, one of my friends was a was a a, 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 a distant um, descendant as well, right? Uh, and there's there's a whole correspondence basically out there that uh, um, called the you know and well it's it's a one one with the postmaster and his brother-in-law, right? And the brother-in-law was a millwright that uh, traveled through Ross Township and other townships in the area, uh, and um, uh, uh, did work for the different grist mills and flour mills and and and, and uh, sawmills and that type of thing. Uh, and we knew nothing about this, but we knew their descendants, but we knew nothing about it. But uh, you know, like, I, I'm just excited sometimes to get uh, uh, um, a piece of that correspondence, you know, uh, and and find um, that uh, the farm that they were talking about, where where somebody bought a a heifer or something of that nature, you know, uh, it was the farm next to mine. It's, you know that. So you're you know, hundred and some hundred and fifty years later, not the, So I, I wish I had more of the local history at that time. Um, uh, but um, you know, to get it now is great too, as well. So. The um, this is slightly different than the original. Uh, the initial question about you know, um, the one that got away. Is there anything in your collecting that you would love, but that is completely unattainable? Uh, in, in the leaf issue, because uh, uh, you know there haven't been a lot of collectors of it. Uh, uh there, there's there's really nothing that has been um unattainable um you know i i think now i'm about as complete as i can make the collection uh there's there's a few things out there i'd, I'd like to like to have but they, they they augment the collection as opposed to completing it uh but you know um the the one thing that uh, i've been fortunate in and again, because there haven't been a lot of collectors of the issue, is that my exhibit now is about a third archival material, a third um, uh, production material, and a third usages, right? Um, wow. And um, and that that's um, I mean, when I, when I when I look at it, well, that's amazing that that uh, I was able to do, to get that, um, and and um, but it but it, it's um, so. I guess the you know I got a I got an item that I traded with somebody in, at Orifex and uh, uh, it was something I'd never seen before. It was uh, it was I have the uh, uh, the unissued uh, uh, die proofs, but this was one of the ones in color and uh, um, I knew it existed, but I've never seen it before. Right? Um, and I was able to get that at Orifex, uh, quite pleased with that. Uh, and then he gave me something else, you know, <laughs> I traded for something else which I already had. Uh, um, or, or thought I had, um, or, or did have, but a various little bit of variety to it. Uh, when I brought it home and I compared the two of them, they're different, right? So I'm down another rabbit hole trying to find out uh, uh, why they're different. And uh, I've just purchased another one of the same uh, <laughs> to see if I've got three different, or if I've got two of the same and one different. Uh, uh, so it, it's, um, I don't, I don't, you know, not, not with this collection for sure. No. So. Uh, but uh, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, you, you you know the 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 leaf issue is your life's work. But is there something else that's in the future for you? Something else that you're looking forward to starting? Well, not not starting, but uh, I, I have a number of other sideline collections that I that I uh, um, have, have been accumulating stuff for. Um, I've been interested in the every householder rate for a long time. It's, it's my it's my delve into uh, into uh, postal history, and, and again, it's a, it's the same kind of theme with uh, with uh, the, the leaf issue. You know, I've got into an area where nobody else collects it, right? There are very few other people collect it, uh, and um, uh, so I've got enough material now that um, uh, I've actually entered an, an exhibit. Um, into the Royal for uh, 2023 in in, uh, in London at, at Canfax. Um, I just got to get it finished, but the, <laughs> I got to pretend it anyways. Um, but that will go through uh, uh, the householder rate uh, from uh, 1889 at its inception up till 19, 1989. Okay, so 100 years of the of the householder rate. Um, you know, it, it, to me, it's a very interesting rate. Uh, it's um, 
it was brought about basically to uh, to allow advertisers to uh, send flyers without addressing, right? Um, and uh, uh, so it started out with a half cent uh, stamp for each one, uh, and um, and then it went to you could use uh, postal stationery, you could use permits, you could use uh, bulk mailing uh, uh, receipts, and that type of thing. Uh, so there, there's a whole different uh, series of um, of ways of um, of um, collecting it and uh, different ways of payment. And that's the way my exhibit will be structured. Um, but I've also got other things that I'm interested in. Uh, uh, um, photographer mailers from the early days as well uh, are always quite interesting. Uh, and I've done a couple of presentations on that. Um, I, 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 got I got interested in the, some of the... Um, some of the uh, what do you call them world exhibitions or world conferences that were held in Canada and there was a lot of them um, there was a number of them in the 30s um, there was the uh, uh, preparatory meeting UPU preparatory meeting in uh, in uh, 1933 there was the economic conference in 1932 there was a world grains fair in, in 33 as well uh, not much after that until the 50s and then you got the uh, uh, the Red Cross one, uh, then you've got the uh, UPU Congress, um, and there's another one for mining, and, and there's several others as well. So a lot of those had stamps related to them, and a lot of them had uh, actually post offices assigned to them as well. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, I've gotten involved with that, and I've got probably, uh, I, I got a, the, the, the 57 UPU issue, uh, the 33 UPU issue, U issue and the um, uh, the 33 uh, Regina Green uh, Exhibition and Conference. Uh, I, I've got uh, uh, some exhibits of those, uh, uh, either one frame now exhibiting or, or in progress, et cetera. So, uh, and there's a few others I've been collecting material for, but I haven't, uh, I haven't done anything with them, I'd say so. Okay. Yeah, I love the the green issue is one of my favorite Canadian issues. I think it's fascinating. So got anything to trade? Yeah, <laughs> probably not anything at your level. <laughs> so all right. So um, if if you were to collect something other than stamps, what would it be? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Uh, I've always enjoyed antique shops and that type of thing. You know, browse through them, but uh, I don't. Um... I might have bought a few things that type of thing, but it's not something that I would want to. I think want to collect. It just isn't the space for it. Um, I don't really think that anything has the kind of portability that that, that uh, the stamps have uh, and the universality of the stamps have. So I think I'll stick with stamps. But but uh, I've always been interested in the, in the, in antiques. Maps have always interested me as well, but. Uh, uh, I, I wouldn't uh, dare to delve into map collecting at this stage, I'm sure. So, yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Okay, well, this has been really fascinating. Is there anything else that you want to share with us or that you would like to tell that we haven't covered? Uh, well, I, I think, you know, like there's a lot of discussion right now about, uh, about uh, where stamp collecting is going. And, and, uh, and um, you know, I think we all collect differently. Uh, uh, the, the generation before me, uh, everybody collected with an album. Um, I do have an album, uh, um, it, but it hasn't been out of a slip case for probably 15 years. Right? Um, that's not the way I collect. And uh, so my collecting is different than uh, uh, the way a lot of other people collect. And, and I think a new generation coming on is going to collect differently than us. And, and, uh, uh, and that's, uh, that's okay, you know, and, and uh, they'll make their own way in, in, in collecting. And, and, uh, I don't think we need to uh, wring our hands about it uh, or anything of that nature. And, and uh, the thing, one thing I do know is that, uh, you know, providing boxes of stamps and stuff like that is not necessarily going to do it, right? So they have to find their own way. And um, I, I just actually listened to uh, Darren Chernikan's um, uh, presentation the other day on uh, at the British Empire stamp uh, study group um, uh, webcast. And he is, he's really got a, a good handle on, on uh, a lot of the things that uh, are happening there. And I, I was really impressed with it. Uh, and um, the way technology is being used, not just for collecting, but in research and all that type of stuff. Uh, it's far beyond what, what, um, what uh, 
what I'm doing. I'm doing with the magnifying glass and the, the light, <laughs> but uh, I don't go beyond that. So, uh, so I, I, I think it's. Um, I think the future is good for uh, for collecting. I think it both all of the stuff that I see out there bodes well. We don't necessarily understand how it's being used, that type of stuff. But my generation, anyways. But uh, I'm pleased to see it's it's happening that way, and uh, um, and I think it'll be. I think I don't think we need to worry about it. I think it's uh, it's something that uh, uh, um, you know it'll just it'll just be different than the, than the way we do it. So yeah, great. I I couldn't agree more. I think. Uh, this current generation is just not a generation of joiners and the internet and and all of the digital things allow allow people to collect at home and yet connect with people that they might not ever meet. So, you know, yeah. so yeah. read, read. Well, uh, thank you for taking the time to come on and be our initial guest. It's very exciting <laughs> to have you. Yeah, and, well, thank uh, you. Thank you. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you at uh, the Royal for sure, which is in London on October 13th to the 15th of 2023. And um, if others are coming, they'll uh, get a chance to meet you too. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thanks David. Much. If you're, in, if you're interested in the RPSC, the Royal Philatelic Society of Canada, please uh, go to our website at rpsc.org and uh, we'd be happy to hear from you. Thanks, everybody.